Dr. 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 Yes, Dr. Hussein, you can start now. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for making oh, a bit of delay. Thank you so much. Okay, today we are very uh, proud to have our two panel for today's session, the webinar series, which is the, with the title of a 10 proven ways to graduate on time, GOT, tips for uh, from the successful PhD candidate. So today, let me introduce today, we have a two uh, 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 honorable guests. We do have our Dr. Ahmad Shakirin. How are you, Doctor? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, fine. Okay, thank you. And we also have our Dr. Sohel Akazimian. How are you, Doctor? Thank you very much. Very glad to be with you here. Yeah, okay, thank you. Doctor. So, without further ado, I would like to say that uh, we are very happy and very to have both of you, our alumni from UITM, and with, uh, I would say, outstanding performance during your PhD journey. Very good. So, uh, I would like to start with introduce Dr. Ahmad Shakirin. So, it is a PhD holder in electronic engineering, graduate from University Technology Mara, UITM, in 2019. He has a six years of experience as a researcher in the nanomaterial field. Wow. And has been awarded with the Excellent Research Award and Royal uh, Chancellor, Chancellor Award during his study. study. Yeah, and this is a very outstanding uh, award, I believe. Uh, his uh, experience in the nanotechnology fields enable him to produce a number of technical research papers and book chapter which have been published in well-reputed uh, journals. Currently, he is working with uh, Mimos Berhad as a senior engineer and responsible for handling a surface analysis instrument, including X-ray, photoelectron microscope, XPS, Argo electron spectroscopic, AES, and the time of a flight a secondary ion mass spectroscopic uh, system as well. Wow, that's very, very, I think most of the thing I do remember because I'm from the chemistry field as well. Okay, so uh, before that, okay, that, that is your a bit of the introduction from the Ama Shakirin, Dr. Ama Shakirin. And we, are, we also have our another, uh, another panels. Dr. Sohal Kazimian is a lecturer in accounting at the School of Business and Law, SBL, Aiton Cowan University, EU, ECU, Australia. He has employed as the postdoctoral scholar at the Accounting Research Institute, RE. University Technology Mara, UITM, Malaysia. Right after finishing his PhD in accounting in 2015, subsequently after three years of working in this position, he was recruited as a senior lecturer by the University Science Malaysia, USM, for one year before joining ECU. Uh, Dr. Sohal has conducted many research projects and get uh, plenty of research grants over the years and has constantly been pub uh, publishing many research papers in a high index international journal. Both are very outstanding, I would say, uh, performance from our alumni from UITM. So, doctors, so we will start the session. I forgot to introduce you know, uh, myself in the first place. Yes, for information. I'm Dr. Hussein Haniba. I'm from uh, IFSIS UITM. I'm the coordinator from the promotion and marketing from IFSIS UITM. That's a bit of my introductions. I, if, uh, I a bit forgot on, on that part because I'm not excited meeting both of our outstanding uh, panel for webinar series, today webinar series. So, Dr. Aman Shakirin. I'll start with the Dr. Aman Shakirin. Okay, Dr. Okay, so, I believe every PhD candidate has his or her personal story when it comes to completing a PhD journey. Uh, because my, uh, my, my myself do have my own journey and my own story. So, Dr. Ahmad, I think we can start the session with your uh, you first today. 
can you share with us how all it started and what was your motivation that drove you to start your PhD? Please, the floor is yours, Doctor. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor Sen. Okay, uh, actually, my PhD journey, my decision to do PhD, uh, started in 2019. Okay, so actually, since my primary school, uh, my ambition is I want to be a medical doctor, not an engineer. Uh, and in secondary school, I took I took uh, science stream, and then after SPM. Uh, I applied for Mara scholarship uh, to go to uh, Egypt at that time. And then, okay, uh, since uh, Egypt offer uh, for medical doctor, and then I choose Egypt. And then I apply uh, in the form, online form. And then uh, after I return home, uh, I told my family about that. I said I already. Cafe, and then I changed my application from Egypt to Japan. So at that moment, I never have any thought that Japan never offer uh, medic because it is very expensive to do medic there. But still, at that time, I already applied uh, to go to Japan. And then uh, I got the scholarship. Alhamdulillah, I got the scholarship. But sadly, instead of medic, I was offered with engineering, electronic engineering. And then when I started my A level, uh, I seriously cannot catch up with uh, with the study because. Uh, I have to force myself to learn something that I don't like. And then also I have to study in Japanese language. The subject is in Japanese language, so it's very hard for me to follow. And at the time also, I spend quite a lot of my time playing video games and I cannot focus with my study. So I end up uh, after the third semester, I was dismissed because of failing uh, several subjects. And then after I was dismissed, uh, my family at the moment uh, blaming me for the failure. And then also my ex-teacher from my secondary school also uh, blaming me. And uh, my friend also started to distance themselves from me. So I feel so gave up at that moment. I feel so down. And there is one night that uh, I think that I want to drive my dad's car very fast and I want to crash on the wall. I think about suiciding. And but still, because of uh, as a Muslim, uh, I didn't do so. So then I took about six months to recover and get my strength back. And and then I calm myself, and that's when I think that. Since I already uh, joined this 
journey as uh, electronic engineer. So why don't I finish it? Finish what I have started. So that's why I, at the moment, uh, I think that I want to continue this journey as electronic engineer. So I joined UITM Dungun in 2008. And then uh, join degree in Shah Alam. Uh, and at the moment, I think I, I, I bear it in my, in my head, bear it in my mind that I want to finish uh, my study until the highest level, which is uh, PhD level. And I want to prove to everybody that I'm not a uh, I'm not always a failure person. I can also be successful like others. So I keep continue my study until PhD and Alhamdulillah in 2019, I finally got my PhD and I was awarded with uh, uh, Royal Chancellor Award and also Excellent Research Award. So I think that's all uh, my, my motivation of why I do PhD. Okay, Dr. Ahmad uh, Shakirin, that you are your your share, story that been shared is really inspiring, inspiring, and also you actually prove to us that the failure is not an excuse. It's not totally not an excuse. Thank you so much, and also you managed to prove to those in a very in a very beginning that you mentioned that have the um, have a have a, a different opinion with you, and you managed to change the opinion, and you come up with the idea that I can also prove. And you, in fact, you excellence. You managed to excellence all your journey until you finished your uh, PhD with uh, a lot of awards. That is a very very good uh, inspiration and a very good story to share and also take uh, uh, notes for most of our upcoming PhD candidate as well. So now I would like to proceed with our doctor from uh, Dr. Sohals. Okay, again doctor. So, doctor, I'm sure, I'm sure you also have a wonderful journey through the PhD uh, you have done in the UITM and everything and inspiring inspire story to share with us. So doctor, particularly in your uh, journey to complete the PhD and get graduate on time, the, uh, got uh, on that particular topics. Again, doctor, I would like to ask the same question that I have put it on uh, Dr. Ahmad Shakirin. Please share with your, uh, with us your story, your side story, and how it actually begins and is ended. Please, Doctor. Okay, thank you very, very much. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. It is very good to be among my family members, my Malaysian family members back in Malaysia or all around the world. I don't know wherever you're watching us. I'm so excited to uh, serve you ITM again, serve you this again. I am officially still attached to Accounting Research Institute as, uh, you know, as a remote research scholar. And so I am still consider myself as part of a big and honored UITM family. It is so good to be with you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hussein. Thank you very much, Dr. Sohili Hasnan and Ipsis. UITM for organizing such a wonderful meeting. I hope the students going to use uh, our experience if they if they found them useful thank you very much for uh, to dr ahmad shakirin for sharing us the very interesting story it was you know kind of the story that all the boys you know all the young men uh, struggling with shifting from playing video game to shifting Play, uh, playing with computer and thesis. So uh, the game is still the game, still the same, but uh, the material is different. So as for my story, actually I came to Malaysia in 2000, in uh, 20, 21st December 2011. I came there when I was 25 only. And uh, I was obviously uh, in Malaysia, I was international students and, uh, but I was so determined, you know, when I came to when I came to UIT and when I came, when I was about, when I was about to start my PhD, my brother told me to what extent you are determined to get your PhD. I said, 
Okay, 80%. Then he said, okay, devote 80% of your time for PhD and 20% for anyone, anything else. So that was how I managed to work hard, as much as hard as I could. You know, in four months time, I luckily could manage to uh, pass my proposal, to defend on my proposal. Straight away, I started collecting data and then I started analyzing data and then I started uh, writing the chapter, one chapter after the others, and meanwhile, my supervisor, my beloved supervisor, Professor Dr. Rashida Abdurrahman, who is just like a mother to me, uh, she supervised me, she instructed me, if you want to perform better, you have to start uh, writing the chapters as well. So, uh, my recommendation, my suggestion to all the PhD students, especially those who come from overseas to Malaysia, to United, to finish their PhD is that PhD time is considered a tough time. We all do agree about that, no doubt about it, okay? But if you are tired of this toughness, if you want to get over from these difficulties, Please concentrate on your job. Think only about what you are meant to do and finish this toughness. Finishing this, tough, this toughness is under your control, is under your, uh, your ability to do it. You know, just concentrate, just listen to the supervisor, just do whatever you are meant to do. We are in Malaysia just to finish our PhD. Malaysia remains as beautiful as ever which it has been beautiful. So after finishing PhD, you still can enjoy the beauty of Malaysia, am I right? But during the PhD time, what matters the most is the quality of the work that you are doing, the quality of the job that you are doing. Think about the family that sent you to Malaysia. Think about the, those who are proud of you. If, you, if they see you, you know, walking on this, walking through this stage in, the, in this uh, convocation ceremony, how you can make them proud, how you can make them happy. So if, if it's worth it, just go and fight for something that you think is your certain right. Okay, so concentrate on what you are doing, concentrate on what you are meant to do and concentrate on what you are in Malaysia to do. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Sohai. It's a very good, yeah, I didn't notice that uh, you actually uh, tell us uh, uh, from a different point of view, I will say from the point of international students, am I right? So that's uh, a bit, uh, I'll say that's uh, quite interesting for me because I get uh, some feedback from uh, an international student and also for our national student, local students. It has, but end up I can make a conclusion that either you are an international student or you are uh, the national local students. Our main purpose in we are at UITM is to complete our PhD successfully because that is a benchmark for all of us and definitely do getting a phd at the end uh, as uh, i would like to quote uh, dr Sahai just now mentions that getting a, a, um, in front of our parents that is an outstanding performance that we would like to show to our parents thank you so much dr Sahai, and also dr ahmad so uh why not why not i will proceed with the next sections okay next questions Okay, now we'd like to pass again the, uh, the flow to Dr. Ahmad Shakiri to share his own personal experience uh, in completing the PhD, uh, in, in the, during the PhD, before, because Dr. Ahmad, you have shared with us the before, how you get into the PhD and uh, the uh, process. But during the PhD itself, during the PhD, sir, what are the problems that you might face through? What are the things that the challenge that you have go through? Because the, I'm sure your story will inspire most of our listener over here, with, which is more than 250 are listening over, like, at the moment. So we would like to uh, hear more from you, Dr. Ahmad. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Atul Sen. Yeah. Okay, so regarding the challenges, Actually, there are many, of course, there are many challenges uh, during my PhD and I just speak some of that. So to me, there are three biggest challenges uh, during my study. OK, uh, first uh, is regarding my parents' health. 
uh, at the end of my master, uh, my father was diagnosed with uh, diabetes and also uh, critical nerve problems. Uh, so at that moment, he cannot walk, uh, he cannot eat uh, on his own. So he just uh, had to lie uh, too late on bed. And at that time, uh, I have to commute from Shah Alam to Trenganu every two weeks to take care of him. And of course, uh, at that time, uh, my focus is no longer on my study. Uh, I almost quit my study and, and at that time also I am about to cancel my intention to pursue my PhD. So, because at that time, my father's condition is very bad because uh, and I think that the chance for my dad to recover is very low. So that's why I think I better quit my study and focus on taking care of my parents, my father. Because I can do my study anytime. And maybe I only have one chance to, to take care of my father. Uh, and I told my dad about this. I said to him, I want to quit my study and then I want I don't want to pursue my PhD anymore. And when my dad hear about this, he totally against it. He said to me, please just continue my master and please pursue my dream to do the PhD. And Alhamdulillah, Allah wills, my dad's condition getting better and slowly improve. And about second semester of my PhD, Alhamdulillah, he finally recovered. And then the second biggest challenge that I faced during my study is, of course, this uh, this point also I think everyone has faced it, which is experimental experimental failures. Okay, this one is quite normal. So during my study, uh, I have difficulties to get the actual result that I want the novelty result that I want. So at that time, I have to repeat, uh, I think more than 60 times the experiment. So every time I do the experiment and then I fail. Of course, I feel give up at the moment. And then uh, I return home. I think I calm down myself. Uh, I start to read again, uh, look at the uh, journals, I refer to the journals for reference and then tomorrow I will uh, came back to uh, do experimental, experimental work and then still fail again and then I keep repeating the failure loops for several times and Alhamdulillah until uh, one time I finally successfully got the result that I want. So at the moment also my tears automatically drop uh, uh, when I got the result because I tried very hard to get uh, the result that I want and I finally got it. So it's quite emotional moment. And then the third biggest challenge that I faced during my PhD time is regarding, of course, time. Because three years is not a long period. It can end up, it can end in without we notice. So at the moment, the challenge that I got uh, is when I think uh, in semester five, uh, FKE and engineering faculty offered me to go to attachment program in India. So I have to spend about six months in India. And at the time, at that moment, uh, I still didn't finish my experimental, uh, experimental works. 
and of course in in, in India I didn't have uh, the exact same equipment that uh, I need to do my experiment. So in order to graduate on time, I have to finish all my experimental work before I go to India. So I force myself, I push myself very hard and do the experimental work uh, and spending my time uh, without sleep for several days and Alhamdulillah uh, I finally finished my uh, experimental work uh, a day before my flight and then uh, when I'm in India when I'm in India I can focus 100% uh, on my thesis okay so I think that's the three biggest challenge that I faced uh, during my PhD time that's a very uh, good sharing, Doctor. Uh, basically, also I can conclude that the factors, not only internally, and environment also cause, and outside also cause our PhD journey, the smoothness of the PhD journey. I can also say that if the PhD journey are too smooth without any challenges, I'm sure both of you have nothing to share today because of the challenges that you face, both of you, that's why we invited you as our role model to share the most of the experience that you have uh, go through in your PhD journey. Dr. Suhail, I will really, okay, now I would like to uh, give a turn to you. Also, can you please share with us about the challenges that you face during your entire of your PhD journey until you get a very outstanding, because I I do understand from uh, your, uh, your biography that you have sent to me that you are one of the students managed to finish your PhD within two and a half years. Two and a half, and this record has been never been break by any other candidate. Can you please tell me what are the factors or challenges that you face until you get this outstanding award, uh, outstanding performance in your journey of the PhD? Please, doctor. Thank you very much, Dr. Hussein and Dr. Ahmad, for sharing these uh, beautiful stories about the challenges that you have faced, about the obstacles that you have passed. Uh, actually, Dr. Ahmad beautifully mentioned about the technical challenges that he faced during his PhD. But I want to take one step further and talk about the environmental challenges that an international student, just like myself, have faced or is going is more likely to face during his PhD time. Okay. Uh, you're right, Dr. Hossein. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, all credits goes to first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and then to my beloved supervisor, Dr. Uh, Professor Rashid Abdul Rahman and Associate Professor Zuraida Ibrahim and all uh, beloved Aryan member, you know, Accounting Research Institute, Professor Dr. Nurma Omar, Jamal Yassad. Zuraida Sanusi and all the uh, my Malaysian my Malaysian family there. So it was totally a teamwork. Everybody supported me, and I tried to be a good member of this team. So nothing could be done individually. So it was a teamwork, and I'm very happy. I'm very I consider myself as a blessed one to uh, to come to Malaysia, to come to UITM, and saw and saw these uh, magnificent people, just like Dr. Soheli Hasna. Okay, as for answering your question about the challenges that an international student may face during his, P he or, his or her PhD time in Malaysia or in any, any other country, uh, I'm not going to touch about, I'm going to talk about the technical issues like failure in experimental. This is happening during the PhD time. The, the most challenging uh, elements can, um, you know, can put an obstacle, outstanding obstacle in front of uh, an international PhD student is financial constraint. You know, we as, PhD, we as international PhD students, we have to pay tuition fees and then we have to, we don't have any family there to support us, so we need to rent a house. Most probably we need to buy a small car as I bought a conchil during my PhD time because, you know, Malaysia is either very hot or raining, so it was not possible to just 
walk to university no matter how close you are to university so i had to bought uh, i had to buy a car i bought a country just for commuting to university and coming back uh so the the financial constraint is is the most uh, uh, to me is the most difficult challenges that an international students may face. And you know, Malaysia is, is a country of celebration. Uh, we in Malaysia celebrate many, many occasions, you know, uh, we celebrate uh, New Year, I mean, uh, Muslim New Year, uh, Indian New Year, Chinese New Year, the Christian New Year. And when you, when you are there as an international students with no money in your pocket then you would face you would you would feel that okay there is something going on out there which i cannot attend because i don't have enough money it is good and bad it is good because okay you don't have money you stay home focus on your work but it is bad you may get frustrated after two years after three years when you see that the celebration are continuously going on and you cannot attend any of them so you may get frustrated what kind of life is that <laughs> so i my my piece of advice to all international students and local students is the celebration has been there for many many years and inshallah will be there for many many day, years after so you just skip attending not all these celebrations some of these celebrations for these three years focus on your job and try to finish it yourself. The second challenges that we face, actually it was more or less the same with uh, what Dr. Ahmad shared uh, about our family circumstances, our family health conditions. You know, when you are abroad, you all the time need to contact to, uh, to your family, to your parents to check whether they are doing fine. You, they don't have you there to support them. You know, I face such problem with uh, Dr. Ahmad, uh, he told us about uh, his father. Uh, I wish his father speedy recovery. As for my case, I, my parents both passed away when I started my PhD. So uh, I had to I had to think of my, my my siblings, my sisters, my brother, my nephews. You know, I was missing them. And that time, the time that I started my PhD in 2012, the social media was not like like what we are experiencing now so we didn't have whatsapp we didn't have telegram we didn't have like what all we had was yahoo messenger that time so it was so difficult to get connected to your fa to, to our family there the challenges was so up so striking there but luckily alhamdulillah thanks to technology now phd students or international students overseas also can get connected to their family virtually so these are the most uh, challenging elements on the path of uh, international students, uh, financial constraint and being uh, away from their family. Thank you, Dr. I really I uh, say proud to have both of you because I can hear from different perspectives. As I told you in the very beginning of the uh, our sessions, that I do get from information from the our international student at, uh, and also and also our national uh, local student, a Malaysian student as well. So I can I totally agree with Dr. Sohail with Malaysia, who we know we know with the festivals. We know with the holidays, so I would say that the challenges in order to graduate be on time or to success in a shorter period of time, I would say yes, we can have our entertainment, but not make sure we already control the period of time. That is a very fantastic, I would say, idea that you have shared at the house. And also, um, I would like to pass the sessions again to Dr. Amar Shakirins regarding the award you've been uh, nominated and you get through all your PhD journey. Definitely, definitely. Because I noticed there is a two outstanding uh, award you've been nominated and you won the prize, which is the Royal Chancellor Award, as, uh, as well as the Excellent Research Award. I know, I know, PhD journey is either the science or from the science background or non-science or social science background. It is challenging to grab 
accept this kind of uh, award. And in fact, I do understand uh, Dr. Ahmad Shakirin because I also do some uh, nanotechnology material, especially for the battery systems. So I, when you say about the nanomaterial, about your about the process of experiment, experiments and, uh, and failures, I do understand, really understand, and, and do uh, go through the same process as well. So Dr. Dr. Ahmad, can you please share with us what, uh, what uh, how say, how been you nominated or get this excellence award as well? Please, Doctor. Okay, thank you, Doctor Sain. Okay, so actually, I only have uh, simple, simple tips regarding the award. Uh, so okay, for the award. Actually, the most important thing, of course, we have to graduate on time and also we have to submit our thesis uh, within three years uh, from our registration. So, in order to get the work, you must uh, push yourself, do your best, finish your study on time and also another thing is uh, our involve uh, our involvement in the phd activities uh, such as uh, conferences and innovation competitions uh, journal papers conference papers so everything will be counted so in order to get the award okay so you must remember this award in order to get this award you have to compete with uh, other graduates also from your itm so you have to bring your best achievement you have to publish as much as you as you can you have to to get as many awards as you can and hmm, I think that's that's the only thing that uh, important to get the to secure the award okay okay I'm sure because I'm very interested to know about this because to in order to get that true award that you obtains is not really as easy it means you need yeah. to really show an outstanding performance among the rest because the competitions among the other candidates are very tight i'm very sure about it so i can say that i can conclude dr ahmad that the consistency in your work it will be the most important things and also an uh, outstanding publications is another added value to all the journey in order to get the award that you mentioned Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmad. Now, I think this is the moment that we wait our panel, our very, uh, our alumni, UITM alumni itself, are going to share with us the 10 proven ways. Well, I hope that we have more uh, method to get graduate on time and excellent. I hope our those are listeners, our audience will be achieved the excellence as you mentioned, uh, you, the tips that you have you're going to share with us. So I will going to pass the session to Dr. Sohal to share the, uh, I believe Dr. Sohal, you have the PowerPoint to share with us. Am I right, Doctor? Yes, so I will share, I will pass the session to Dr. Sohal for in order to uh, share with us. Yes, the floor is yours, Doctor. Can you see my slides now? Yes, doctor. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Actually, uh, whenever I want to talk about my experience when I was doing my PhD, I would name it as a the journey. You know, to me, starting from the beginning toward the end, when you are walking through the stage of convocation, it is a journey. Oh, it is a beautiful journey if you know how to deal with that. Okay. When we start a trip, when we start a journey, actually thinking about uh, the moment that we finish, the moment that we reach our final destination, makes us not to enjoy the path. 
Okay, so whenever we start, the journey actually started when we leave our house, right? So the journey starts as soon as you decide to go out, you decide to achieve, to achieve your destination. Uh, doctor, uh, I, this is only, uh, is that a moving the slides? Yes, the slide is moving now. So can uh, you see? No, Doctor, it's uh, it quite static at the moment. Uh, 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 this means uh, we can only see a picture like, uh, how to say, a uh, colorful picture like that. Is it only? No, 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 no. Actually, I, I'm running these slides now. Mm, hold on a moment, sorry. Okay, okay, Doctor. You can't see my presentation now, right? Uh, no, I can't see the presentation at the moment, Doctor. May, maybe you can share screen, maybe, Doctor. I can see your uh, the, the curve, the, the mouse is moving around. Okay. But the PowerPoint is not appear. So in worst case scenario, maybe we can use uh, the, the, the copy that I sent to you earlier on. So. Uh, okay, Doctor. From there, I talk from here. You know, just to save the time. Just give me a moment, Doctor. You still cannot see it, right? Uh, no, it's not up here, Doctor. I only can see the curve is moving around, but uh, the top one is missing, Doctor. Okay, okay. 